brought to you by Levi Strauss and Company, official outfitter of the U.S. Olympic team. Arco Atlantic Richfield Company, proud sponsors of the 1984 Los Angeles Olympics. Huggies, the diapers that help stop leaking. And Unicap Air, for the vitamins and minerals you may be missing. So basically what you've got here, this jib, this little thin, thin sail, is in fact a vertical airplane wing. And it works on much the same principle. So what I'm trying to do is to get it in fact to fly most efficiently, and those two telltales are helping me do that. And what I'm trying to get them to do is to stay parallel. Because when they're parallel, that means the wind is going by both sides of the sail in the most efficient manner. I like more. Fly, sail. One of the really nice differences between sailing and flying is that Sailing is something you can share with people. You can take eight of your friends out on the boat and go where you want to and, you know, have a good time and share it for all ages. And I find that when I'm flying an airplane, the concentration is so intense that, that there's a separation between the pilot and the passenger. But here, you know, if you're cruising, it's like a family. And if you're, if you're racing, it can be like a fraternity of people dedicated to the same purpose. And that's a, that's a very good buzz. But well, what is it with the, the thoughts that go through your mind? The first thing goes through mind is just the sheer joy of being out here. It's just a sense of release, a sense of like, I don't know what they're all doing in those buildings there. It can't be that important, you know? <laughs> what are they all doing? Why are they in those ice cube trays? You started sailing when you were six. Mm -hmm. And then you sail competitively in national races. What do you like more, sailing in competition or for pleasure? Well, I pretend that I like it more for pleasure, that I've completely given up my competitive instinct. But if I see a boat the same size as this one, I suddenly have to take over and try to beat them. But I'm not as insane as I was as a child. I used to... Uh, I'm a little monster, <laughs> yes. Here he comes. They used to call me Tophie in those days. Tophie, That's what? my nickname, Christopher Reeve. Oh, Christopher. Yeah. <laughs> what can you tell us uh, uh, about something that when we watch the sailing, the yachting events, uh, television during these Olympic Games, what are the things that we should look for? A lot of people try to kill each other, but no, it's... it's, it's um, the tacking duels upwind and downwind are the key events. Uh, as you try to decide, for example, if you're going to windward, the windward marks up there, we would have to zigzag to get there. So if I zig and you zag, you know, if you're my competitor, that's going to have a lot to do with who gets there first. And blocking off your wind as well. Right. And who you want to cover, competitors will decide who they want to match. You know, they'll come in front of some guy and decide who's the key guy to try to block his wind. Also, when you're close on, you never want to be directly behind the boat because you're getting all this dead air. The air is, is uh, turbulent, directly behind the boat. So the moves are also a bit like a chess game. Very much like a chess game, and the start is really where the, the chess game begins. Okay, the only other race that American audiences are familiar with, I would say, would be the America's Cup. How is that different? Um, since it's one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know where, where your competitor is all the time, and you generally are trying to blanket him and try to take his win. So it is more of a duel, whereas uh, Olympic racing is a, is a full-out war. It's a skirmish. Every time I talk about the fact that you're a very successful actor, a popular movie star, you kind of avoid it out here. Do you like dealing with that part of yourself when you're out here? I completely forget that it has anything to do with me. Can this really make Superman human? Hmm. It never occurred to me that he wasn't. <laughs> no, I think, I think, I think uh, he has to be at the center, a human being. At least that's what I was trying when I played him. It's to play him as a gentleman and a scholar rather than just some sort of, uh, you know, a, a wall. What are you striving for professionally? Well, the, see, I'd, I'd been in the theater about 15 years before I played Superman. And Superman was a big gamble for me. I said, well, you know, I bet you I can play this and still have a career. You know, it may sound smug, but the, the deal was that Superman could be a real person and, and perceived as a performance. In fact, Sidney Lament, when he hired me for Death Trap, said, anybody can make, anybody can make me think he's Superman can certainly be in my movie.